From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to talk about automating your marketing funnels. Joining us is Jordan Mederick, who is the founder of Drop Funnels, which is the world's first tech-free platform to easily build your entire website, blog, sales funnels, SEO-powered blog, courses, and more built on the world's most powerful and fast infrastructure, WordPress. Yesterday, Jordan and I discussed the perfect offer formula. And today we're going to continue the conversation talking about conversational tactics to eliminate sales objections. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Jordan Mederick, the founder of Drop Funnels. Jordan, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Glad to be back. Excited to have you back here and continue our conversation. You know, I feel like this episode is a little self-serving because yesterday we were talking about the perfect offer and I've just gone through and tried to create a new offer for my business to create podcasts for other brands. And you outlined that basically you're choosing two out of three between fast, cheap, and good. Are you going to have the best service? Are you going to be the fastest to deliver? And then what's your price and how does it compare to the rest of the market? Eventually, you figure out if your offer is competitive by looking at what your customers say. If it's so good that they feel dumb not saying yes, you've mastered the offer. And now you get to move on to making sure people are aware of the offer so they can make their purchase decision. And boy, if it was only that simple, life would be great. Talk to me a little bit about some of the process in sales. When you've got this wonderful offer that you've spent all your time crafting, how do you make sure that you're having the right conversations to eliminate your sales objections? So this is going to specifically tailor to those who are doing one-to-one conversations. And I think every business can thrive through either continuing to optimize around one-to-one conversations, or if you're not doing that right now and you're just essentially working off of a landing page or or ads where people just call in and buy something right off the bat, adding a one-to-one diagnostic conversation is a complete game changer. And that's what really helps you to separate your offer out, both from a customer service perspective, but also from a revenue perspective, you can collect far more in a one-to-one conversation than you could on, say, webinars or often even live events or sales pages or sales funnels. So it always, in my opinion, needs to be done directly through a diagnostic-based conversation. So that's the key is we are trying to diagnose. We put on the lab coat of a doctor and we decide what is it for this specific person is the right solution to help them to eliminate a pain. I have this crazy and slightly controversial thought that essentially every time we're buying something ever, no matter what you're buying, cars, food, engagement rings, clothes, you are moving yourself away from pain. People say that you're either moving towards pleasure or away from pain. I say you're straight up moving away from pain. Even if you're getting a mail order bride or something, you're trying to move away from the pain of loneliness. You know, if you're starting a business and you're buying consultation, you're buying your way far from being destitute, broken and by yourself, right? So we're always moving away from pain. So that's what prospects are coming to you with. They're coming to the table with pain. And I think the biggest change that needs to happen in most sales conversations is to recognize that that person wouldn't be on the call with you if they didn't have a deep pain that they were trying to solve for. So with that, we can come into the call with empathy and understand they're having this pain. They don't even know what a solution is very likely. And we need to kind of bridge that gap. So 80% of your conversation does not need to be around putting a square peg in a round hole and say, you need to buy this thing, even though that might be your goal. My postulate here is to eliminate your attachment to the outcome and instead attach to the process. 
And what I mean by that is diagnosing and prescribing them a medication for their problem. So any high ticket sale or consultative style arrangement, you can be very empathetic. You can be more leaned out instead of leaned in. You know, it's funny once I start kind of whispering and I talk very slowly and calmly, if you go try that even with your spouse or friends or whatever, you're going to start to see they lean in. Their energy changes dramatically when you have this leaned out, no pressure type of energy that it's extremely disarming for someone who's trying to get a solution. But when a prospect feels like it's the right fit for them and that the person who's selling it to them understands their situation even better than they do, sales resistance absolutely plummets. It's when they feel like they can tell that you're trying to get them to buy something that may or may not help. They don't have the clarity in the path of that. So to kind of wrap that up into a bubble, number one, believing wholeheartedly that your prospect is coming to you with pain and they're trying to escape it, we need to come to the call with empathy. Two is leaning out is going to cause people to lean in and want more from you. And third, diagnosing and prescribing a solution, even if it's custom or even presented as custom to them, is a game changer when it comes to sales. I think of my sales approach as being a consultative approach. I came from a independent marketing consultant background, meaning I was a consultant for a bunch of tech companies here in Silicon Valley. And my job was to ask them some questions about what's wrong with their marketing, listen to what they said, and then read what they said back to them so they could figure out the answers. And often what I'm doing in sales is basically taking a very similar approach. I'm starting off my sales calls with, tell me about your business. Tell me about your marketing problems. What are you doing for content? Where is it falling down? And that inevitably leads us into, okay, well, where do you think podcasts fits into that? What are the things that you would want from a podcast? And they start answering the questions about why they need it. Now, I've been listening to Cole Gordon. He's the founder of Closers.io. If anybody's looking to outsource their sales, he's got some great YouTube content about basically getting to the objectionless close, which is diagnose the problem, understand, and I'm paraphrasing his words, what's their hell and what's their heaven? You know, what's the problem that they're having? Where are they trying to get to? And position your solution to be the car that navigates them from their current state of pain into this utopia that they're trying to get to. And if you do that correctly, then they don't have objections and they'll become your customers. Now, inevitably, there's always some objections in a sales process. No matter how great your offer is, very rarely is somebody going to come into a sales call and say, great, I'll buy two. So what do you do when you are getting the sales objections or what are some of the things that you can do to minimize them or eliminate them as much as possible? There's two questions that I believe that you can ask that will identify where people are on kind of the litmus test of how far along the buying decision and buying path that they may be. So after you've dropped the offer, they've asked for the price. By the way, that's another little golden nugget. Never, ever give the price until they ask for it. Never give any prospectus. Never send them off a report. Never send them off some kind of like marketing plan that has a price. Damn, I am screwing that up so much. We have our pricing listed on the web page. I feel like everybody knows six hundred to twelve hundred dollars per episode before they even come into the conversation. If that's a price anchor in the way that it's like, hey, they can't get that anywhere else, then sure, you could shout that out to the rooftops, right? But again, if our goal is not to be the cheapest, because what if someone wants to come in and they're like, hey, we want way more than what you're offering. How does that work? It's still going to require kind of a custom pricing diagnosis. So I always recommend never give the price, especially high ticket, which is usually over $2,000. Never give it on the website. Never give it away on a webinar in general. Only give it when they ask it in a one-to-one conversation. How about mentioning it casually in a podcast? Oops. You could also do that, right? But again, if the price anchor is the primary differentiator, then often that can work. But these two questions I think can really help. So after you've given the offer, they ask for the price, you give it, and maybe they start to throw some objections. You could say, hang on a second. Look, I get it. Let's just take a step back here for a moment. If you had this process, this vehicle, as Quote calls it, if you had this in six months, where do you think your business would be? Or where would your life be? Or where would your health be? six months from now, and let them answer that question. And in the same way, say, all right, cool. Well, let's say you don't have the say, I'm not willing to even give this to you. Where's your life going to be six months from now? Same question, but in the antithesis. If they come out and say, my life is going to be better on the other side, or my life is going to be worse if I don't have this, it's a surefire sale. It's a matter of navigating payment plans or those types of things, because it's illogical to not take a medicine that a doctor gives you. However, if they say, oh, my business will probably be the same, then they literally can't see their idea of how this vehicle is going to get them there. And so we need to attach them to this process. We need to get them back into the car and understand that this, how this is actually going to help them get there, often through questioning. 
But those two questions, this is what I call the golden question. Six months from now, where's your business going to be if you have this? And then where's your business going to be six months if you don't have this? If those two things align and they're giving responses back that are affirmative, right? They're saying it's my life is going to be better or my life will be far worse. Then it's really a question of another gold nugget here. This one comes from Cole as well. He's brilliant with sales training. He says, whenever people give pricing objections, which is the primary objection that people give is pricing objections. It's probably 80% of them. The number one question to ask is, all right, look, I get that. Finances aside, let's put that off on the side. Do you believe that this is the right time in your life and the right process to help you get where you want to go? So we're separating them from their wallet for the moment and saying, is this the right time for you? And is this the right process to help you get to your version of heaven? If the answer is yes, then again, it's just a financial objection, but then we've isolated that. But this all from an ethos perspective comes down to this empathetic and understanding demeanor that we're really trying to help them not just to buy something, but to get where they want to go because they've been stuck for quite some time. It's interesting. I find that when I'm going through my sales process and we're relatively new with this, it's like, hey, let's diagnose what your problems are. You want to create more content. You want to do it quickly. You don't want it to take too much time. You want to be able to syndicate your content, grow an audience and have it funnel into demand generation. Great. We check off all of those boxes. And people are often leaving saying, well, yeah, this sounds good. Let me get back to you. To me, that's the biggest objection to get over is not the, does this make sense, but does it make sense now? How do you, without being pushy and without being desperate, overcome the objection of that sort of apathy that, yeah, this could work for us. This might be a great solution. Let me get back to you. I think it's very much a persuasion element, which would be a question that you'd want to ask early on. And persuasion is a great word. It's about before they even hear the offer, before they hear the pricing, you can get a gauge and say, hey, where are you at right now in trying to get your content machine up and running? Because like, again, the biggest thing here is they're not looking for content. They're looking for clients and how content can help them get more clients. So content is the vehicle. The end result is revenue. So the very best question that, in my opinion, you can be asking when someone says, ah, let me kind of just get back to you. The best thing is to acknowledge that, cool, I got it. I realize in all my time of doing this, that more time usually doesn't give you more answers or give you more clarity, but getting more information will give you more clarity and more answers. So what piece of information are you missing right now that would help you to make a decision? So when we can identify that, call it out and say, look, I get it. I totally understand. Time's not going to fix it for you, but information will. What information are you missing? We open up the door to let them answer that. And often they'll start to divulge information that they haven't previously. Like we just were in a financial crunch right now and we can't get started till next month. Cool. So it was not a time objection. It was a financial objection. So it's like, cool. So who does starting at the first of next month make sense for you? So it's about isolating it into the time in their life. Is this the right time to do it? The process to help them get where they want to go and the fine and the investment for it to all make sense. But I think the persuasion element of asking where are they at in the process, you know, what when are they looking to get things up and running far before they even hear the offer is one of the best ways to persuade them and understand their situation before you even get there. Because if they're going to say, hey, we're not looking to start for six months. Great. Why would I even give you an offer? My offer is going to change in six months. So it's like, you know, it makes more sense to just chat again in six months. You know, there's always this debate, at least for me internally, of how much are we focusing on being product led as opposed to sales led? How much are we trying to have conversations and sell big ticket item that we're personalizing and customizing the sales process as opposed to how much are we using technology to clearly display what people need to know about our information so they can just come in and do it themselves? And that's, I think, where your core business drop funnel really comes in is sort of bridging the gap between the two of those. So that's what we're going to talk about in tomorrow's episode. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Jordan Metterick, the founder of Drop Funnels. Join us again tomorrow when Jordan and I wrap up our conversation talking about how to automate the four funnel archetypes. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Jordan, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can find him on all sorts of social network. His handle, it's universal. It is your bro Jordo. That's Y-O-U-R-B-R-O-J-O-R-D-O. Or you can visit his company's website, which is dropfunnels.com. And you can even email him at jordan at dropfunnels.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. 
Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is MartechPod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.